should be going live. Or we should be live. And then get started. Hello anyone who may have just joined. Right now we got Kale with me. What's up? I don't think there's anyone else in here actually <laughs> just yet. <laughs> so you just said <laughs> hi to yourself. Whatever. Oh there you go. We got a few people in here. Alright, I'm gonna switch over to my screen. And then I'm gonna go on to do some stuff. So I was gonna do some burning game stuff. And stream. So let's go ahead and switch to the broadcast. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, man. What's up, Alec? Oh, what's up, guys? Yeah, we, I got Kaylin in here, like I said earlier. For anyone who's wondering who that sexy voice is in the background. Yeah. That is Kaylin Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how was your day, man? What did you do today? Were you pretty, pretty productive? You said you caught, like, a rare Pokemon. I don't know what that means. Oh, no, I caught, well, I caught an Electabuzz today. <laughs> got the, I, went, I went to the doctor to go look at my ankle. And then you caught electric yeah. buzz when you're hanging out at the doctor's office. You're just like, yeah, I was like, hold up. <laughs> now you have an X-ray. That's important information, but there's less buzz in this room right now, and I gotta catch it. No, no. Luckily, it was on my way. On my way out to my car, I caught it. But um, <laughs> no, I was gonna look at my ankle. I hurt myself. I hurt myself like three weeks ago playing soccer, like in my soccer. Oh game. man. And like it took me out. Like it's been like three weeks since then. It still kind of hurts. So I had. A, I was like, I should probably get it looked at. Luckily, there's no fractures, so it's most likely probably a ligament, I, a ligament issue, which is usually not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Like fractures can be bad, so luckily ligaments you can kind of heal over time. So I probably stay off of it, and I'm probably just not used to being out that long from ankle injuries. So it's kind of okay. I like to like to be active, so I think it was more like I just don't want to wait anymore. So I tried playing yesterday, and it just didn't feel that good. So they're like, you should probably stay off of it. But I'm gonna go see a physical therapist. I think when I get back. And then we'll see. We'll see what it is, but it's good news overall. So, kind of like paying for peace of mind, you know. Cause you gotta pay for the X-rays and stuff. But I was like, eh, f it. I get to pay to not worry about it. I'm good. That's good. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna come back here, chill, do some freelance, and you know, relax a little bit for my trip. Right on. Right on. Oh, we got a lot more people joined in now. Let's see who we got going. We got Carlos, Darius, James, Gerard, Ryan, Toby, Tabiso, Mix, Enoch, hey, uh, Pedro, Tim, Mark, Toby again, Alex again, Calvin, Mix, Lucas, Pablo, David, Martinez, dude, I, dude, I'm proud of you, man. I've been seeing what's going on with your life, and I'm very happy for you, brother. I think you're awesome, and you deserve great things. So I'm glad to see the great things are happening. Um, Rashil, Jimmy, Christopher, George, oh boy, Kozlowski, <laughs> and then Zabby, my man, my man Zabby. Well, it seems like people are relating to your injuries. Yeah, I and I got an injury in uh Croatia. But oh, it yeah. <laughs> but it yeah, but that was something stupid. I got I just drink a lot and I fell. <laughs> and uh my shoulder got messed up. But I thought it was like broken, but then I got X rays it wasn't broken. I thought maybe it was fractured, but then the X rays again proved that they weren't fractured. And then uh I just kept uh, I went to see a doctor again when I got back to the States and they were just like, No, there's really nothing wrong you just fucked up your shoulder <laughs> you like probably sprained it really badly and I was like oh, okay yeah so because you're moving it he said if you, if you can move it then it's not broken <laughs> and I'm like all right I guess that makes sense and like yeah, it might hurt but like it seems fine and then uh, sure enough you know a few months later or like a month and a half later like yeah it's totally fine I don't have any pain in my shoulder anymore it's pretty genuine Pretty good. That's good. Yeah, I just I just hated feeling like I couldn't like walk or do anything. So it's just like man. So like cause I mean I, I try to play like three times a week soccer, and then I'm in the league and stuff like that. And I'm like I'm just not go from that to not be able to do anything. I'm just like this sucks. Yes, yeah, that's, that's sucky. Right on, man. Right on, though. 
Swimming through some real machine, I'll figure it out. Swimming, eh? Yeah, dude. Swimming. I do. I love swimming. Oh my god, why is this so heavy? Water is good. And it's nice and warm now. It's warm for days. Yeah, let me save this. Because I have a feeling it's going to crash if I don't. Okay. Yeah, so uh, if you guys want to ask some questions, because I got Kalen here, so he can help moderate. He's like in the. He can see the comments and stuff. Normally, I like to answer questions if I can, but like right now, like I need to kind of stay a little focused on what I'm drawing or designing. And that little focus is pretty important. And so, um, but you know, we can all hang out still. I like hanging out. Uh, I'm trying to make an effort, again, still to just keep streaming when I can, and, uh, the Burning Games guys are really good friends of ours, and they're, they've helped a lot of our students out, they've helped us out, and, you know, this is one of those things where, they're, like, they totally do not care if we showcase or stream or demonstrate anything that I've done, uh, for them, for their projects, which is really cool, it's really nice. Like, not too many clients allow you to do that, obviously. And for good reason. It's a very rare occurrence. But, anywho. Yeah. Let me see. I'm sure I can see, um... For some reason, it's not letting me, uh... It's not letting me click on more comments. So, like, really? Have you tried refreshing? I'm gonna try that. Let me see. What the... <laughs> the one asked you what you're eating for lunch. Oh shit, I thought I was muted. <laughs> Alright, um. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess I, I can't click on the more comments. I can't look at I can't look at previous comments. I guess that's probably what the issue is. But I can see anything above from what I just wrote. That people ask questions from there. Then I'm good. So. I'll just write this. If you have questions... Yeah, to start asking. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm just going to keep working. Okay. I'm gonna, you guys going to keep hanging out. Okay, cool. Alright, we'll see. We'll see what we get while I mute my mic and suddenly eat my sandwich while you have whatever anecdotes you want to talk about. Alright, give me a sec. Yep. I mean, for for me, it's just uh, I'm just working on this project. I'm making like some. Wait, hold on. I think my daughter is in here. I didn't realize she just walked in. Delilah, you gotta use the boys' restroom. So that way you can be loud and call mama. I can't get up, unfortunately, sweetie. You can call mama. Go ahead, and call mama. Um. So I made that material, and I have my black material. So, right now all I'm doing is adding the different materials to this design. Okay, we got a, we got a question now. I, oh, okay, now I figured out how to, how to do it. You figured out the matrix? Uh, yeah, I don't know why that wasn't working. Um, in the beginning. That was so weird. I know John was having some issues like that in the very beginning, but I think he might have figured it out. I'm not sure what's going yeah, on I either. I think I have to just make sure that it's like uh, uh, that I'm like in the video. Like if I'm watching it like on my wall, I don't think it shows up. So I feel like it's like yeah, a... that's exactly that's exactly right. <clears throat> so that was the issue. I was like trying to click more. Anyway, someone said, "So are you sculpting this in the pose it will permanently be in, or are you just freeforming the body shapes?" Uh, I'm posing, the pose is actually symmetrical, like all the pieces are separate, so all the pieces are independently, um, have their own symmetry to it, which is great. You know, like, so if I, the arm pieces have its own, like, if I click on this, um, it has its own symmetry. You can't see it, but it's like, uh, well this piece is not a good example, but like this piece is definitely a good example. So you can see that red plane right there, right? And that red plane allows me to now sculpt symmetrically on that thing. Uh, but I, I've already m made most of my design choices uh, in this pose. And then, yes, I would be sculpting moving forward um, asymmetrically. <laughs> because this is going to be the final model that they're going to actually 3D print. And we have not tested this yet, so I still need to investigate how that's 
process works, the uh, the best practices of that. But you know, since it's a 3D file, the the, the process of iteration is pretty huge. Like we can iterate quite a bit. Is that hard to like repose it? Let's say like they. No, it shouldn't be. They they come up, like you show them that pose and they're just like, hey, can you move the arm like out and make his head look up? Is that is that hard to make those kind of like little? No, it shouldn't shouldn't be. I I just have to reorganize my vocals and then just grab them as pieces. Like basically, I I, I do like a very makeshift rigging if that makes sense. So it's like it's like things are it's like a Photoshop file and folder, right? Like a folders within Photoshop. So let me give you an example. So once Photoshop opens up, it's probably because I'm streaming and doing all this other stuff. Let's see if John wanted to join in. No. Let's see if I can add him to the convo and he'll just jump in. Do 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 do. John. That's weird. Photoshop took so long. Oh, I guess it just didn't recognize. So for, for so if you just conceptually not understanding what I'm saying, uh, I'm literally going to show you using Photoshop. Like, so let's say I have piece one. We'll call it piece one. And then piece yep. two. Oh, there he is. Awesome, man. Being oh, awesome. I didn't know you were streaming. Yeah, we're uh, streaming I'm, right now. I'm actually running some tests with Mache right now. So Okay. Uh, it's all good. I'll join you later. Yeah, just uh, ping us on Skype if, once you're done. All right, man. Latest. So, so individually, you know, I can be like, you know, rotate this, right? Mm -hmm. But as the group, I can rotate both pieces at the same time, right? That makes sense. Do you understand? So yeah. that, that's all I'm doing is I'm basically putting different pieces into different groups and so that everything can be rotated and separated independently, you know? And it's literally like what I'm doing. Just instead of like Photoshop flat 2D layers, I'm using, you know, 3D layers. If that, if that helps anybody, like, generally under, try to understand what I'm doing here. I think I think I remember because I think uh, I, I had taken Jama's 3D conferencing course and he, talk, he talked about, like, folders and stuff. like the Voxel layers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I, now it kind of makes sense now. Yeah, dude. So let me see. I'll do different shades of green. This is pretty cool. It's got to feel very sportsy. So there. That's pretty good. Very, very sportsy, huh? Like a, yeah. Like an athlete. Future athlete. Where the heck did I just... I just made that material and it just disappeared. I don't know. I guess that's, that's it right there. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, and by the way, guys, you guys can ask questions about anything. You don't have to ask questions specifically about what I'm doing here. We're, we're all hanging out. I'm going to be doing this regardless, you know. And you can ask stuff about environments because Kalen is an environment guy. And he knows a lot about that stuff. So feel free to ask stuff about that as well, you know. There is no problems on whatever the question may be subject to. Someone asks, how do you do environments? And I'm like, never. <laughs> so there you go. Like it it kind of has like that like football helmet feel. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's there. Like so, the the theme of the game is pretty cool. It's like a sports game. Um, it's in space, and I'll let you answer that environment question if you generally want to answer that question. But uh, basically, they're like chasing this like high speed ball that's like flying around planets and stuff, and they're also going like super fast, like all these players. So it's like epic, like football in space, uh, but it's like a board game. Which is cool. Uh, I'm I'm starting to get into board games as well, and I'm finding that there's really a lot of fun that, to be had when you're doing board game design that you just couldn't do in video games designs, which is really interesting. And it's actually super interesting that you can do half of the stuff. I had no idea, and now I'm like becoming a real uh, addict to board games. Like I'm I've got a couple board games recently that I I've started playing. I played a few of them last night with the guys. Um, yeah. And it was it was fun. We played this one game called Coup, and dude, it's so good. It's such a such a good game. Yeah, it's it's really good. I just, it kind of reminds me of some. I actually sent you a couple of links that really remind me of some kind of football stuff. Maybe it might help. All right, I'll check it out later. And, uh, uh, 
someone said, how do you cycle between the current brush and the previous brush? Um, are you talking about? Oh, it says in Photoshop. Sorry, that's in Photoshop. Oh, uh, I I just picked the brushes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing. There's no secret. I just grab a brush. I use tool presets, so I usually know exactly what I'm about to get. That would make sense. Um, there is like plugins and tools out there that allow you to like hotkey your your brushes and stuff, but I generally don't need it um, because they don't need to be hotkeyed a lot of times. The brushes that I use, but I understand some people really want stuff like that. So I would say you, you do do some digging, investigate. And you you'll be sure to find something out there. And uh, someone wrote, "Just want to thank you, uh, AJ, for your three D code tutorial. Been having so much fun with it." Great. I'm gonna be doing one today again. I'm gonna make another tutorial. Uh, if if not today, so definitely tomorrow. And that one's gonna be about painting, like actually doing three D painting, and not like the kind of voxel painting that you would do or uh, pixel painting, or I don't know what they call it, but be poly painting in, in ZBrush, which is you just paint the individual polys, because that's very heavy and that's very uh, daunting on your machine, especially if you can't handle high polys, but this is like a, a very in-game type of way of doing it, which is really awesome. And so I'm going to talk about how to do that and how it's awesome to do that. But, anywho. Anywho. I might actually hold off until tomorrow. I might do some more research to make sure that it's as, as informative as it possibly can be. Um... And then I, I might release it. But other than that, I'm very, very happy to hear that people are happy about the tools that I try to teach. And like the 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 whole point is to get people more adapted to 3D code. Those guys over there that are making 3D code have made a very beautiful software, and I still think that they don't get enough credit um, for the software that they've developed. You know, and there's like some artists out there that are doing great stuff. Actually, I'm going to try to invite one to one of these streams one day when we can just talk and hang out, and he can talk about his experience with it. Um, but like there's others out there that are even better than I definitely way better um, specifically you know drama obviously but like there's some, some students of his that are like phenomenal and I think they need to get some recognition for their quality of work that they're doing you know word word indeed wrote, um, let's see here Okay, which video tutorials, uh, Gumroad or free, do you recommend for advanced stylized shape design? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, I usually go on Pinterest, and there's like tons of resources of just character design stuff or animation drawing type stuff. There's a website called the Art Center, I believe, too. And it's not to be confused with the Art Center School. It's like a blog. They have a lot of great resources as well there that you can find there. And then... And then, uh, YouTube, I think there's a lot of great resources, too. Mm. Uh, I know there's a lot of Patreon people that do a lot of really cool stylized stuff. Uh, I mean, just, uh, I think a little bit of investigation, again, I always encourage just a little bit, and you'll be shocked in how fast or how quickly you'll be able to, um, find great, uh, tutorials or information or education. But, I mean, I, I don't know. What about you, Galen? Um, I was eating chips. Um, <laughs> um, in terms of uh, for advanced style like shape design, I feel like that kind of comes from knowledge a little bit, from just having good taste. And um, I would imagine that that kind of comes from exploring a lot and kind of just looking at things, um, looking at different kinds of uh, elements of design whether it's photography, environments, characters, all that stuff will kind of help you build a better taste and build a better kind of visual library, which I think in turn kind of helps develop that idea of, of creating, um, you know, shape design or form language. So a lot of that, I think, comes from building your visual library. So what, looking at different plants, watching different movies, that kind of stuff. Like, again, like what you always say, like, if you don't have, if you don't know shit, like, you can't draw it. So I think you mm -hmm. have to kind of go and just get more, just just stuff visually so i think that's why pinterest is good because it's, it's just like just like images like all the time that's looking that you're kind of just looking at and that can always kind of help build that that visual language um in terms of uh, videos though i don't think i've really any anyone talk about that i mean there are some kind of do's and don'ts when it comes to like shape design and stuff like that but um usually it always depends on what you're trying to achieve the client you know because depending on what the client wants then 
you know, that's going to obviously make something very, very different, uh, depending on if you want to do more stylized or realistic, you know what I mean? So, um, but I think the biggest thing is just knowledge. So just getting a, getting a big visual library will help that out. Sweet. The facts of life. All right. And then someone asked, uh, my question about, about environment, if you could elaborate on how to use lighting as a storytelling in your image. Um, how do you use lighting as storytelling in your image? Well, I think lighting is a very good way to lead the eye, and that's kind of like how I would like to use it. And so mostly things are in light that we can see, and if things are not in light, we can't see it. So usually it's, it's, it's pretty actually just kind of obvious that things that you want the player to kind of look towards, um, you, you would put it in light or have it have like high contrast. Um, video games are really good at doing this, especially American video games. They're really good at lighting. And um, when you look, when you look at like kind of like like Japanese like those kind of games, like the, the light is kind of like straight all straight all the way across. It's very kind of like diffuse lighting. Or if you play games at like like Bioshock or Uncharted or something like that, um, they're very good at kind of like highlighting certain things from afar. So when you're standing, you know, in the game, you can see you know this light kind of you know pulling through like a window or something like that, and it's highlighting something. And you very much know that that's fairly that's, that's fairly important. So I think um, in terms of storytelling, I, I think it's not necessarily that complicated. It's more so just um, learning how to create contrast with with lights, and with more contrast, your eyes is definitely drawn to it. So hopefully that helps. Um, someone wrote Quidditch three thousand. Right on. Anything. Else? Uh, Someone else wrote, uh, is there a way to turn shaders into smart materials and then use them in paint room? Um, yeah, like, all that stuff actually I'm, I'm going to talk about in the a Gumroad video. But basically, um, you just bake everything, <laughs> and then it just works. Mm. It's actually surprising how well it works. So, um, it's a little too much to talk about now, and I'm not going to do that with this concept because I'm going to paint over it in Photoshop. But pretty much, yes, you can you can get quite a bit. But I, I actually find the best solution is just to leave it as it is and to just go in there and paint in a lot of stuff yourself. But anywho. All right. Uh, someone wrote, uh, best cardio workout? I don't know, swimming? Row? Row machine? Uh, I mean, the best, mechanic, mechanically speaking, the best one is running. You know, you'll hear a lot of people say, oh, it's bad on your joints or whatever. That's just inaccurate. It's it's only bad if you're, like, running freaking marathons every other day. You know what I mean? Um, but if you're just, like, running five, maybe ten miles uh, a day, like, if you get to that level, like, that's pretty high-level running. Um, and if you get reasonable shoes, I mean, some people go barefoot because barefoot is actually even better. But, you know, that takes time and effort to get. So if you just get relatively good shoes, um, you, you should be able to run for the rest of your life. Our bodies are mechanically built for walking and running, right? We're bipedal, and we need to, to move. That's why a lot of health problems come from sitting down too much, you know? Because our bodies are, especially as artists, because we're not doing the physical activity. Another factor to why people get joint problems, too, is usually they're uh, either overweight or their body is just, they, they work themselves a little too hard. So that adds to the problem, right? Imagine that your body is efficiently, runs at efficient weight of, like, let's, I don't know, I don't know how tall or big, let's say you're 125 pounds is your efficient weight to be running, um, but you're 140. So imagine you're carrying 20 extra pounds as you run, mm. you know? It's just not, it's not helpful, right? But, uh, I mean, you don't need to run like a lot though that's my point you can run like a, a mile a day and that's more than enough actually you know like if you do a mile a day and then walk you know a few miles so you spend about 30 40 minutes of good just walking and running you're like loosening your joints you're you're stretching all your muscles you're um adding uh the 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 ability to basically let your heart work um then you you'll you'll be good. But row machines good for people who don't who are already kind of like in a position where they, their joints hurt a lot because they, you know either they don't run a lot or they don't do a lot of activity. And then swimming's good because it's not a lot of high impact as well. You know, but you eventually just want to get to running if you can if you really are serious about having the most optimal cardio. 
Um, like I'm like with that being said, I don't run. You know, I have terrible cardio. Um, but whenever I do do any kind of cardio, I do prefer um, swimming because it's just a lot more fun. It has nothing to do. <laughs> it's just fun, right? To swim versus just running. Pick something that you like. Yeah. If you like it, then you'll probably don't mind doing it for a long period of time. That's that's a better piece of advice right there. Is just find something that you actually do want to do. But if you were asking what's the best, that's in my opinion the best. Um, and based off of a lot of just genuine evidence, you know. But do I like running? No. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like running, but yeah. I'll play a soccer game. I can play soccer. Hours. Yeah. See, so. That. But see, then that's another problem. Like that's the thing. Like soccer is a high impact. Like because you're constantly twisting and turning, you know, and that's why you like mm-hmm. fucked up your shit, right? And so it's like, it, 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 like just a very passive run. With, you're not racing anybody. You're not trying to beat. Like you know, you're just running for the sake of just running. Then you shouldn't hurt yourself. You know, if you start feeling any kind of pain, you just stop. You just start walking. You know, um, people go too hard. You know, you don't want to go too hard. You want to go consistent. That's the, the strat. Yeah. But, like, yeah, in sports, people screw their shit up all the time because it's just, like, sometimes you're just not thinking about it, right? You're just like, i got to dive head first, you know, to stop this guy from kicking the ball, this this ball into a hole, you know? You're just like... <laughs> that's not what happened. The guy, slide tack- the guy tackled, slide tackled me and then shit my ankle. That's yeah, like, but that's why I say, like, that's not going to happen if you're just casually running. <laughs> the odds of that happening. <laughs> Some guy just running and just like, i got to slide... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a slide tackle and look at how efficiently he's running. <laughs> I got to get him right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, your odds of, like, injury is obviously higher when you do, like, contact sports and stuff like that. I mean, like, like hurdles, man. I never, ever even imagined trying to do hurdles. I remember one time we were at track and field, and I watched this girl. It was the most sad slash hilarious slash sad thing I ever experienced. Because at first, like, she hit the first hurdle, she kicked it down. You know, we're just like, oh, that sucks. So it's kind of sad. Then she hits another one. She kicks it, and we're just like, okay, this is kind of comedic. And then she did the next one and the next one. She pretty much hit every hurdle. But on the last hurdle, she, like, tripped all over herself and, like, fell, like, face first. That's when I became sad again. And it's just like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Pete, because obviously that wasn't, that wasn't, like, something that you realized like at the race like I can't jump hurdles <laughs> well maybe that she was just having a bad day who knows but what? that's a that's a bad that's a bad week of training that's not a bad day yeah either either way is it, it was pretty uh, it was pretty rough to watch um and again that's just like the stakes of that like how often did our ancestors have to jump over a consistent array of rocks that were perfectly aligned at a very a specific distance you know for a very long period of time no like you know uh, humans are notorious for migrating which meant we would run or walk a lot you know like you look at people in kenya you know they don't have knee and back problems dude <laughs> you know what i mean they don't have problems like that at all you know they don't they have like some of the best cardiovascular in the world right uh like there was a, like a case where one uh kenyan had like a heart attack and it was like a rare case of like what how the hell did this guy have a heart attack you know where in america we have it all the time you know, because, like, you know, these kids are, like, running from their their house to their village, and it's, like, literally 20 miles away, you know? So they're literally, like, running 20 or walking 20 miles every day to go get, like, food or use the internet or something, you know? Uh, so I'm just saying, if you're if that was a serious question, if you really want to get into it, I would say, you know, run try to run half a mile one day, the next day try to do it again, the next day try to run a mile. Just move up until you get to like five to ten miles, and that that gets you right. Around, that gets you right around thirty to forty-five minutes of running every day. Okay. Uh, someone wrote. Uh, Sam Brooks got your book. Says it said it's inspirational. Awesome. Thanks. I'm glad you got it, man. There we go. One person down. Keep, keep going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Michael Young says, "What's up?" And I'm Michael. I'm actually like I realize I'm actually like about. Uh, two eighths of the way through, or actually, that's what is that? One fourth, a quarter of the way through, actually, which is yeah, which is actually not too bad. I'm very mm-hmm. excited about that. Yeah, slowly but surely, man. Mm-hmm. You just keep keep staying the course. Keeping going. Yeah. Uh, mm, AJ wrote, "How easy would it be to take a model like this from 3D Coat to Unreal 4? I imagine it's hard. Uh, well, that's what I would do is I would uh, you know, make a model that is just all 
basically flattened it all down to one geometry, and then I would auto topo or re topo it, um, or you know, uh, z remesh it, whatever. Right? Where the heck is the? Hold on, I'm, I need to make sure I don't lose track of where I put all this stuff. Oh, here we go. Because once you're dealing with 3D stuff, it starts getting real freaking. <laughs> it's getting real intense, real fast. Okay, so this is a JPEG. So this is going to go here. And then I'm going to do Corvo B. So I don't forget. I have to name all this stuff. Oh, I need to separate this guy, actually, from a target. Um, so, yeah, let me just answer that question before I get into this again. So, basically... Um, make it a game mesh ready, like get it under 100,000 somehow, which is actually not too difficult. And once it's around there, then I throw it into Unreal. And it should be good. There you go. Like I said, the next video I'm going to put out, which will it most likely be tomorrow, because like I said, today I'm going to do a little more r and I'm pretty confident in the system, but every once in a while, you know, uh, I need to do a kind of a demo of my demos. So make sure I give out as valid information as possible. But... Basically, yeah, I mean, it's 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 really straightforward, uh, and it's actually really easy using 3D Coat. Okay, now uh, someone said, <clears throat> uh, "Hey, no, hello, Anthony. Will you make a new course and learn squared painting with confidence?" Was very useful to me. Uh, unfortunately, I probably won't, but I am going to be making. Uh, oh, you know what? Here you go. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to make work files folder. That's probably going to be better. I can just put them in here. Um, un unfortunately, no, but I am doing my own courses. If you go to the, my uh, website, which is robotpencil.net, and if you go to the boot camp section, or the classes section, you'll see a boot camp. And then there's my, all my classes have been sold out currently, but you can um, register for the waiting list, and then whenever we have it done, I'll let you know. And then you can go and uh, sign up if you prefer. And it's it's very similar to what you experienced with the, the Learn Squared course. But the difference is that uh, we we meet twice a week. Um, I'm going for five weeks instead of four. And then, um, or instead of eight. Uh, so it's like a half, kind of, it's more than a month. And then uh, I am talking with you more often. And I'm working with individuals like it's basically more of like a consulting thing if anything uh, I, I do the best that way and I'm going to be reworking a lot of my courses too which is I'm going to make them basically I'm going to make a 2D um, version where it's like all like there's going to be two passes of it where it's like more stylized and more realistic and then there's going to be a 3D aspect of it too which you, if you want to do everything in 3D and it gives the students options on how they should approach each week um, so it's going to be kind of like a full package character design class. That's my goal with it. So hopefully that was helpful. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I never, I never really... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make it as in depth as humanly possible. The whole like, the end, the the class of all classes of character design. But um, I'm learning, that might take me more than it might not start up till the next next turn. But it's, it's going to be reasonable. To the boot camp thing. Very cool. <laughs> People are interested in, in, in getting on the, the waiting list for... Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, and Caitlin has some classes available too, and I highly recommend Caitlin's class too. Seriously, because Caitlin's a great instructor. And the way that um, I'm running the, the roll of pencil aspect of it is that I think people who are really good educators, I want them to have their own cl classes and courses and have them managed through our site. So basically, the site will only be kind of like a HUD like, I'm not really in ent entirely managing his course or how he runs it. We have, like, kind of a belief system and what we believe we should how people should learn and things that we've seen actually work in, in, in a practical sense, you know? Yeah. Uh, but over that, oh, like, overall, though, like, past that, like, I don't really um, want people to, uh, like, that our teachers are, like, on the robot pencil. I don't want them to think that they have to do it any which way, you know? Keep it loose. What's up, guys? Oh, what sweet. Happened, What's up, dude? What's up, John? Love you, bro. <laughs> What's up? What were you doing? You were supposed to say you're running something? He was uh, doing some tests with Mache. Yeah. 
Uh, running from the test? Yeah. So you ran and took the test? Some cool things we're doing. What were you with? <clears throat> Top okay. secret, dude. Top secret? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> They're, uh... Lotus Word is also making a porn division to their, yeah. you know, every industry. No biases. <laughs> Equal opportunities for all entertainment industry. Exactly. <laughs> for... I still highly recommend people go to Learn Squared, obviously. I think there's a lot of great uh, <clears throat> courses there. And they, like, you know, me and John and those guys are still really good friends. And, like, we talk often. And uh, oh, we, awesome, yeah, we, um, like, John was telling me about all these courses that are coming out. I was just like, oh, that's so awesome. You know, so you guys get ready. It's going to be really uh, uh, unbelievable. So be prepared. Education for us young artists is phenomenal in this time mm -hmm. and age. So we're using Twitch more, much, much more um, than we used to. That's great. We're starting to realize that I mean, it's it's one of the best avenues, especially for like uh, gamers. You know, like uh, looking to better their career and not just playing video games, but making working in the video games. Yeah, like a. Uh, which is a, a fucking awesome platform to do this and get started. But yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, and the one thing about at least us Rebel Pencil is that we don't, uh, yeah, we don't mind recommending other people like, for yep. stuff, like recommending other places. Like, we'll be the first to tell you. Like, if, some, if, if something's cool that's out there, it's dope, that we think is dope, like, we'll tell you. We won't say, oh, that that's tight, so we're not going to tell anyone about it because it affects, like, our it affects our business. Like It, it doesn't, though. That's the it beauty. It really doesn't. It, we all help each other out. It's kind of weird to me because it's, like, everyone, like, Learn Squared, CDA, <clears throat> um, you know, like, Schoolism, uh, Brainstorm. I mean, that's what <clears throat> Cube Rush, Gumroad. I mean, I recommend all of them. There's, like, there is no, no Nomon. Like, there is no wrong answer. It's just that everyone's different. Everyone learns different. Everyone is, you know, learns differently from different instructors. People have preferences when it comes to learning. Um, and that's awesome because there's so many avenues. There's so many preferences people have that can kind of cater to what you're looking for. So there is no, you know, ultimate ultimate school or ultimate class. You know, it's just whatever you're looking for. And I think that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Kim Jung Ji, I just remembered. Kim Jung Ji and Rob Rupo are doing a workshop over at Kazon. I just remembered this. Ooh, an Irvine thing. And I, I just remember this. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna try to go. That's awesome. You should. I'm gonna. <laughs> Especially Rob Rupel. That's like one of my favorite artists of all time. Where, where are they doing this? It's in Irvine. It's a school. It's one of the schools in Irvine. It's not like, it's not like Baranka, I think. Yeah. Baranka. What'd you say it's called? Culver. Kazone. K a z o n e. Yeah. Let me see if I can. That's where uh, Andy Kung went to, and he like. I think he was like going to school for engineering. Yeah, can you grab a link for our people and throw it in there? Yeah, let me grab a link. I got yeah. it, yo. I got yeah. it, bro. Yeah, they should. Wow, They're they... done for for kind of producing some. some Holy dope crap! Dope. Their website is like level. I didn't realize. I didn't yes. even know about this guy. Yeah, this um, I used to work with the guy who runs the school, uh, Charles. I don't know if he still does. I think he stepped away. I could be wrong. But, no, um, he's still part of it, I think. Yeah, yeah but it, it was just like, I remember we were talking about it, it was like a lot of responsibility, <laughs> you know, he just like had a kid and was working and just was like, I don't know if I can do all this stuff. And yeah. so, yeah, look, this is super official. <laughs> yeah, like Jeff, Holy Jeff, smokes. Uh, Jeff uh, Ivor, I think I say his last say his name, he's a really dope artist, I think uh, Claire. Yeah, what's... And then, uh, yeah, Andy. Like Andy works works at Cartoon Network and he went to that school. Like, he was going to school as a um, as an engineer at like, UCI. And he didn't like it, or like he graduated, and he was like, "I don't, I don't want to do this." So then he started going to Kazone, and then like just worked on his shit. And now he does like storyboard to think over there, or like a story artist over at Cartoon Network. He works on Powerpuff Girls. Okay, here you go. I found it. It's in. Uh, it's on their blog. I'll put it in the Skype. You guys can put it in the chat. Yeah, I know Jeff Iver. I didn't even yeah. know that he ran that. Yeah, yeah. they're all they're all dope put, people that have come out of put, that, like come out of that that. Group like awesome awesomeness so <clears throat> everyone everyone every school is doing is doing tight things so i put the link in the chat if you guys don't mind sharing like the blog that actually ha shares the event that's happening uh yeah i'll, I'll throw it up real quick yeah king jung ji is if, for those of you who have no clue why that's a very important name to remember he's the guy who basically um does those drawings like by like with one pen and then at the end, he'll finish with like an epic, like, like scene. So there's like a really amazing 3D model that was just 
like done by this person that was doing one of his concepts, which was basically like a mermaid being like diced up into sushi. I'm sure yeah. this this is going around the internet for a while, a little bit in the last week. That was originally a Kim Jong Ji drawing. Mm. So, didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Something new. Yeah, I saw him at CTN. So cool. Yeah, I remember he like stopped like the whole aisle, like nobody yeah. can get through because All they're day. just because they're just <laughs> we're like. I mean, he never talked. He just draws, and it's yeah. just you're like in one second you look away. It's like mm-hmm. or one se- moment he's drawing a foot, and then you look away. Next moment it's like a full person holding a gun, in like three point perspective, like from like a bird's eye view, and you're like what? And then you turn away and come back, and then it's a guy like fighting three other guys that are like in pers- again that warp same warp perspective, perfectly drawn, and uh, they're also hunting holding guns and they're like emoting like whatever and then you look away again and then there's a zeppelin and then you look away again it starts to animate and you see steven spielberg directing a movie and then you look away again <laughs> and it's he's all, it's done and he's working on another drawing and you're like what happened i looked away only five times and it's already he's already better than me that one character he did is better than everything i've ever done in my whole portfolio so uh, yeah, i wanted to I want to go see him if I can, actually. Do it. Do it. Do it. Alright, I don't think there's any other questions at the moment. I saw, I saw somebody. Let me go through and see who else has joined us. So, Manuel, what's up, Manuel? Kai again? Everton? Oh, uh, someone else Calvin? Here, like, games regularly. Like, Kenwin? Like- Timothy? Tycho? Uh, Nick? Love you, Nick. Enzo, uh, okay, the gaming question, um, yeah, I, I play games, um, not at regularly, like, I maybe spend, like, the kind of games I can play are mobile games, like, right now, I'm really into Clash Royale, and I probably, in the whole day, probably play 30 minutes of that game, total, not, like, straight, I usually play, like, because the match, matches last at least two to three minutes, and so I play a game, and then... I usually go about my day, and then I play a game and go about my day. Maybe I'll play two or three games in a row, and that adds up to be like five, ten minutes. So yeah, about like 30 minutes. Uh, I'm nearly getting into board gaming, like I mentioned earlier. I think that's a lot of fun. There's a lot of interesting games that are made in the board game industry that I just am a big fan of all of a sudden. You know, it's just really, really fascinating. Like We played a game last night, I was talking to Kayla about it right now, but... Um, last night, me and John and uh, two of our other friends, Aaron and Lloyd, we played um, Coup, and that was a lot of fun. That game is fun. It's oh, so right. good. Yeah, it's it's, it's actually so simple too. it's really good. It's really wow. good. And then um, what, what else? We played uh, Zombie Dice, and that was a lot of fun. We played another game. You weren't there for that. We played Love Letter, which they like. Lloyd liked that game a lot. Um, and then we played a game that I designed, which was uh, Triple Threat, and it was a good experience. And uh, but it was, it was really important because I learned a lot of like valuable lessons from it. Like for instance, I learned that tooltips, man, like there needs to be tooltips to every game from here on mm-hmm. out. Because like because you because the same problem happened, right? Like we when you played my game, you were kind of confused, right? But once you've understood, it's like oh okay, I get it, right? But it had to take a couple explanations, right? But then when we played Coup, the same thing, same problem, right? I explained it, and you're just like, uh, right? You know? And we were just playing it, and, you know, and I can tell you guys are still not entirely sure. Yeah. But the difference was there was tooltips. So you guys were, like, while someone else was playing, you guys were reading. And I remember, like, you and Aaron, like, almost at the same time, were like, oh, I get it, you know? like, And as soon as you guys got it, like, you are like, oh, this game's amazing, right? And I was like, wow, that's a powerful thing and then even when we played love letter the same thing happened with aaron aaron was just like he was still like not entirely sure of the kind of principle of the game but then afterwards he was just like oh i get it now and he said like the tooltips was just amazingly powerful because yeah. he didn't have to wait for me to explain it to him he can just like read and read and just like not have to think like oh i want to tell it ask aj about this thing and then he's gonna like tell me but then i'm gonna like ruined my chances of winning because I had to ask him about this problem, you know? And so it, it was good. And I think I want to play more and more games uh, because it's, it's like, fun. It's a lot of fun and it's really interesting. 
And a game like Coup is the type of game that you can't play in any other instance. You can't play it really as a video game, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just like that kind of game that needs to be played with other people in a room, you know. With I don't know if it needs to be cards, but it, you know, it needs to be in the in the room so you can look at people's faces and be I like, know, I call bull. Once we have the virtual reality online gaming. Yeah, I guess that's game. true. <laughs> but that's my point. I guess like you, the interactivity needs to be there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it's similar to what's happening with Pokemon Go. Like Pokemon Go, I don't think would be nearly as popular uh, if it wasn't if you weren't able to walk around and actually talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> right. It'd just be Pokemon. It'd just be Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Except you're outside. But it's like the combination of being outside and then hey, talking with people about it. Like it's really, I think there's going to be a wave of this happening. There's going to be more resurgence to people interacting with one another a little bit more intimately versus like what it is now, mm -hmm. a little disconnected. But anywho, yeah. But uh, I played Overwatch uh, every so often. Overwatch is a great game. It sucks though because like since I haven't played it for so long, I try to jump in. Like I'm at such a low bracket because I don't play with anybody. Like nobody works together, and the games take forever to to connect because everyone's at a higher level, you know. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's playing at like a higher bracket, so I can never really play with anybody. Yeah, and I try to really. Sorry. Uh, I was trying to play with like some friends too, and they're like, "Sorry, bro, we want to play competitive." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh," because <laughs> like because I to play competitive yeah, and I'm like, I, I started I started really like focusing on communication. Um, like really hardcore and just like inspiring the teams and stuff. Me and uh, Brainchild, like we were playing together. We were just like, let's do the team. So you're yeah, like, like just this. working together, like pushing them, you know, like and you really helping each other and stuff. Next time. Huh? You should play with Danny Levisi. Uh, I wish I could, angry. but he has a stupid PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. I play with him on PlayStation, and that dude gets angry. Come on, you can do it. And he's like, I would. But he was doing it. <laughs> That's so funny. Seriously, man. If he's getting killed like multiple times, he's not having a good time. <laughs> but like a lot of times, we'll be playing, and it'll be like, he's like, dude, it's over, man. We can't do it. Like we're gonna lose. And I'm like, dude, like it's not over yet. Like we still got time. And then it's like, then get the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> you start hearing Overwatch music. You start putting it together. And I, I don't try to be like cheesy, like like some Lucio. Like, come on, I'm with you, man. Like, I'm just like, dude, it's not over yet. Like, we could still win, so keep going. And then eventually we'll win. And I'm like, see, I freaking told you, man. And he's like, yeah. never mind. I, it felt like it. <laughs> he's dude, like, I, I've won because um, you know how like it's competitive and somebody leaves. Yeah, you can. You have like five people and they have six. Like. That's the Seriously, when you communicate, you could still win. Yeah, you could still win. With five it's, a, like it's a heavily inspired team game. Yeah, it so is. So if you can get the team to work together, there is no doubt that mm -hmm. you can come out of it victorious. Like one time but... we were playing, and Danny, like, he backed out. He's like, can't do this, and he backs out. And then, like, we were down a man, and we literally held him to, like, like literally, like, the second of, like, a second went down overtime. We lost in overtime. And I texted him. I was like, dude, like, if you wouldn't have left, we probably would have won that game. <laughs> he's like, don't you put this on me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you saw what I was doing out there. This is my fault, man. And we were like, dude, if you would have stayed, we would have had that. We went to overtime. We just needed one more person. So it's funny It's funny when you play with that guy because he gets, like, he's super into it. And, like, you would think he's, like, an angry person. But obviously that guy's, like, the nicest guy in the world. But it's funny when people, like, in that game, like they get frustrated, and you you, you play with the little the little the little little voice things that you have on the on the, each character, and it's like, come on, you can do this. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been really trying to like stay optimistic and like trying trying to just really like influence people with like kindness, you know? Because like kindness everybody... is like hard to fight against. I I you use kindness. It's a great like I that's a good recommendation. I'll let yeah. you finish, and I'll tell a story of kindness. It's so funny, though, because people are just like, what is this? Stop, stop, stop being so nice. You know? <laughs> just like, Start cussing at me, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. Like, this isn't This isn't correct. This is this is some other form of trolling. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Positive trolling. <Yeah. laughs> you send them a message, so that when they get the message and they open it, and they're like, oh, this guy's talking shit. And so it's like, they, you're a good person. They get, you send them yeah. a loot box, and they're like, exactly. what? <laughs> like, here, here you go, bro. It was a nice try. I appreciate your effort. Like, like what? Uh, the... 
people that, forget that the game is fun. You know. Yeah. Just it's a fun game. Like, yeah. Losing and they're just like so frustrated. Like you gotta remember that it's just a game. The game is positive in itself. Like someone, someone, someone actually made that one that one song right where they they took the music and they put all like the positive like audio. Yeah, yeah that was dope. Yeah, right. And so it's like overall it's positive. You're more positive than I am. I will tell a person they're trash. <laughs> well, like, you're messing up. What are you doing? But that they're never gonna grow. Fire. They, they're you. never gonna grow as. A... F you. <laughs> so so I swallow in front of them and let them die. So there was a game we played in League of Legends. Me, John, I forget who else was with us. I think it might have been Will, right? <laughs> and like it most likely was Will. We were all hanging out. We were playing a match of League of Legends. We were playing the Twisted Tree Line. So it was three v three. We were playing, and you know. um the guys on the opposite team were like, you know, trolling us hard, right? Mm, and yeah, and then they said something like really like, you know, like the kind of troll like, like I don't know what they did. They they said something like along the lines of just like, I don't know, it doesn't matter. They said something that's like it wasn't trolly troll, right? It was just kind of like oh, I can't believe that happened or something. It was just like a playful troll, and I wasn't mad. Nobody was mad, type of thing. And then when we started to turn the tides, right? Like, we were starting to kick their butts all of a sudden, you know? Then I I said the same thing, you know? Just kind of like, haha, you know? Like, like now we're in the lead, you know? And, like, when we responded to theirs, we are just like, oh, you know, haha, right? When they responded to me, they are just like, you're trash! That character's broken! You got lucky! And it was just like, all of a sudden, just this hardcore, just like, chat log is full of just ch- anger. And I'm just like, hey man, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't mean to, you know? It's like, you said it earlier, I thought we were playful. I thought we were friends. And he was just like, no! That character's stupid! You got lucky! You know? Like, you're, you're being fed, it's broken. Riot sucks! And I was just like, <laughs> oh man, you know, I'm sorry. Maybe the character is broken. It's like, I wish... Bad, bro? You mad? Yeah, it's like, you know, I, I wish it didn't make you so angry, man. Like, I'm, I'm having a good time. I thought we were all having a good time. And, you know, John, I think, was joining in. He was like, yeah, dude, we're just all having a blast, man. And then, like, like around, like, ten minutes of us just talking back to these guys with nothing negative, just, like, constantly just, like, trying to talk them down from that cliff, <laughs> you know, talking them off that edge. Eventually, at the end, they're like, no, you guys are cool, man. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. You guys are awesome. You know, yeah, do you want us friend to see it? Honor for all. Honor for all. You know, we're just like, yeah, we, we, we definitely beat them, but, like, it was just kind of like, you know, we're like, it's okay, dude, like. It's just a game, you know. No, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's gonna come out your house and say, "Sir, you lost the game in Twisted Tree Line, so you must give us your firstborn." No, you know, it's just people. Yeah, it's like what John said. People forget it's supposed to be fun. Like you're supposed to be having a good time. You know, like it's supposed to be a, a break from work, you know, or life. You know, you, you're supposed to have an enjoy experience. It's funny too. Cause I like enjoy it, winning. Too. Of course, winning is great, but if you can enjoy losing, it's then you. But if you can enjoy losing, then you never lose, do you? Right. Yeah. The best, the best thing that I've come up with right now, like uh, just to piss the other team up off. Uh, it's it is really a, another form of like trolling you know, <laughs> to me, and I'm having so much fun with it. Like, <laughs> the thing I'm doing now is just like you know my team has really tr- like true leadership skills. You guys just need to really uh, you know practice on your leadership. You know, you guys are, uh, you're failing because of that, you know, and like, they're like, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> Wait, then, but now you're like making like live comments. Like, some I know. Shit. That's like, what I've been doing. It's just, it's you know, just okay. so funny. But people are like getting pissed at the same time, but they just don't know how to feel. That, that is an interesting tactic, like to yeah. get into uh, opposite team's head. Like, it's not like, it's one thing to just be like, you guys are trash. Everything about you is trash. Because that's just like a, a, a comment that most people can just discount. You can just totally, you absolutely can just be like, that person has some problems and he's just angry at life right now. You know? <laughs> Um, but if someone's like, "Hey, listen, you know, I've been <laughs> I've been looking at the s- statistics and I've been looking at the game, you know, and right now it seems like your guys' leadership is really out of control. Like whoever's on your team, you guys have a really really toxic dynamic. You need to figure you, <laughs> you need to figure out how to correct this dynamic because it, it's just not working. And then they're like, "Shut up!" And you're like, "No, listen, you know, like my team, we're really working together. We're communicating well. Like you see what happened earlier with the Roadhog was doing that, and that was like executed beautifully because what I did, and you're just like talking to them while they're still playing a game. But, but you're like chatting. Activated this whole game. Play like the way I play now is just like 
with that is because Overwatch used to be such a friendly game, like before when when the oh beta yeah, just when the beta yeah. And I read that uh, Blizzard's trying to figure out a way to you know like, like, what happened get that back. Yeah, because everybody's so like hateful now. <laughs> and like after reading that, I'm just like, eh, I'm gonna try, it. you know, just just messing with people. It's it's, it's a, but it's it's cool because it's like it's it's not adding a lot of pressure on the you know the opposite team. They're just like, yeah, maybe I should work on my leadership skills. You know, maybe it was me because I got frustrated and said some, talk, you know, talk shit early on. Maybe it's because you're playing Widowmaker and you suck. <laughs> That's what you're I'm not saying. helping the problem. <laughs> We're trying to make better players, okay? Because then okay? they switch out. Or I mean, like, don't pick me. Check the stats, bro. Check the stats. You Somebody should... said, hi, Anthony. What's your opinion about which, which game has the best character design? Thanks for sharing your art. Oh, Dark that's Souls. a great question, actually. He said Dark Souls is his? Yeah, Dark Souls is great. I can't argue against that. Dark Souls is amazing. It's pretty sick. <laughs> it's pretty good, man, yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> tight, tight, tight. Tight. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, man. I think it's really good, too. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dark Souls. Dark Souls is great. Uh, I don't have any negative uh, comments again. Dark Souls. You know, ironically, I actually like Demon Souls, like the very first of their game. It, was, it had a very classic kind of, of appeal in terms of uh, the aesthetic. Oh, wait, hold on, just a second, guys. My wife's talking to me. Um, hey, John, you can answer that, or Kaylin, you can answer yours, and I'll come back and answer mine. Uh, mine. Character design. I like Destiny. Destiny is just really standing out for me. Like they're the look of like every character looks really epic. There's like those gotta be my favorites. I mean there's a lot though. But... My favorite character design? I mean, coming from an environment guy, I don't even look at characters. I look at more environments. But then again, I don't play very many like I'm kind of a bro when it comes to games or like I play a lot of fighting games. I mean that's that's what I grew up on. So what about the fighting games then? What's your favorite? <laughs> game that's a fighting game that has great design um i mean i gotta say third strike because that's that's what i I knew it i knew you were gonna say it and that's a great answer because third strike looks dope but like but the art though i think is really good Third Strike. i thought like the hand painted back the the painted backgrounds like i agree that's all stuff is really really dope so i have to go with that but i mean the game that i play now is like you know overwatch and i love overwatch like overwatch is dope like so i don't know like i don't play too many of those kind of games because I don't play games that are very like character heavy driven. I mean, except with fighting games, we don't really think of it like that. You don't think of the character design, but you think of more just how the character plays, as opposed to like something like what you guys play, which is like those demigods and League of Legends, all that kind of stuff, where there's so many characters. Yeah. Like Overwatch is the first game that I've ever played that's like there's just so much variety in characters. Where usually I just play a game where it's like COD, where like you're just one person, and then it's the environment that you're playing in. Mm-hmm. So I don't think I have that much experience. Like I played Destiny, and actually I, I really like Destiny. Destiny was really fun, um, just because all the characters that you saw in that. But I, I would say definitely like for fighting games, like like Tekken, Third Strike, those are all kind of. I definitely there are definitely some bad character designs. Like I don't think anything in like Dead or Alive is like memorable. But I think like Tekken has been really good about creating cool characters. And same with like Capcom and Street Fighter. I don't like uh, necessarily the Mortal Kombat. Actually, I take that back because. Um, the concept art looks pretty cool, and like the Mortal Kombat, like Marco, those guys, and like um, yeah. the other dude that does stuff for Mortal Kombat, like they have cool designs. But I'm just not sure about like the final, the final product. I would say, yeah. I think, like Street Fighter. I used to love the old school Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, great. Instinct, you know, those were kind of <coughs> interesting. But, um, but yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I I would have to really think about that because right now my knee jerk reaction is Overwatch, right? Yeah, characters. Yeah, because it's like they're they're beautifully designed, and yeah. I I might have a bias. That's why I'm saying because I know the people who worked on them, and I know they're really good. You know. Somebody asked, did, did you work on Overwatch at all? Uh not really. I only did the cinematic. Um, like, and I didn't do much on the cinematic. I did like the spell effects of Winston's, or not spell effects, but the effects of Winston's little jetpack that you see for like a half a second. That's it. That is it. Mm-hmm. That's I was the thickest part, man. That's the best part of the whole cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, I don't know what this game is about, but those effects, whoever good. did them, man, they're yeah. next gen concept artists. Um, that's, how, that's how I feel when I was at ILM because I never did anything like, I never did anything like cool. It's like yeah. these really small things. And I'm like, you see that blood dripping down from that? Like in slow motion? All me, dude. You know, conceptually speaking, Monster Hunter, for sure. Yeah. Monster Hunter, yeah. like their art book 
is like They're one of the amazing. best I've ever seen. I haven't, and I've never played that game. Just because I want to play that game. Yeah, I've never even played that game, so. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go buy a DS. Oh, sure. all right. Well, See you guys. Well, later, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, all right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> comes back. Like, he gets an idea, then like he goes for it. I, I respect that. Uh, I think uh, again, conceptually speaking, like all the Final Fantasy games, almost all of them. I can't think of one that I don't think was really good. A lot of Square Enix games, actually, like uh, Chrono Trigger, like all the art that was done there. You know, uh, gameplay wise, I don't know. Like I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of Final Fantasy games, but if you're asking about the art, like art is phenomenal. Yeah. Right. Final Fantasy Tactics. Did you oh, guys yeah. see that? Oh, so good. Final Fantasy. I did, uh, and it's good. Dude. But I don't know if it's going to be a good movie, Yeah. but it looks freaking amazing. It does. It's just, god damn. It might be yeah. one of those things where I'll just like it just because it's so good. Yeah. Like, That's looking. the only reason I want to watch Cause it. Because I, I, I don't even... Oh, go ahead. I'm just, yeah, I don't know what the story is about. I never really have, but it's just like... <laughs> I don't think anyone really <laughs> does. I think the, that's why Final Fantasy VII sticks mm -hmm. in people's minds, because it actually had, like, a truly Western story, you know? It had, like, a trauma, or it had drama, it had tragedy, it had, like, a beginning, middle, end feel, it had, like, an underdog kind of story. Everything else uh, are usually formulaic, I guess. Chrono Trigger, for me, was that. Xenogears was freaking that way, too. Yeah. Um... But my point is, is that yeah, like, like I don't even like Spirits Within that the, the one that they came out with, and then even the the Final Fantasy VII movie they made, like I didn't like the movie, but I I loved the vi like I I actually own them just because they're just so cool to look at, you know, and if you guys know me, I'm like really into like visual effects. I'm a, I like like good visual effects. Uh, like that's why I'm a big fan of the Transformers movies. You know, you, you hear this all the time. Where like like visual effects don't uh, make the movie. It's all about the story. That's a that's a total lie. <laughs> There's plenty of movies that are like on the top hundred movies that have been sold and made money that are literally just visual visual effects spectacles. You know, with very basic stories, if no story at all. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that a movie should not have story and just be all visual effects. I'm just saying that there can be a movie that is just so freaking dope looking. That people will just go watch it just on that merit alone, you know, um, and for the same reason why people go watch just a really well told story, you know, the movie can have no visual effects and just be pretty much just shot on a freaking iPhone, but if it has a compelling story, it's it's amazing, right? Uh, and it, like you can tell because like if you look at a movie like Transformers, that franchise, like people flock to see that, especially the the Asian audience, like the Eastern audiences. Right? Because they're the audience that love that. They love those types of things, right? But then if you look at um, the Battleship movie, which was also supposedly hit the same market, it didn't have just... It didn't have the same caliber of visual effects, right? And it's enough... It's enough for people to... People are not foolish. They can see, like, ah, that, that kind of looks like a cheap version of it, of Transformers movie, you know? And so it's very important that you guys understand that if you guys ever decide to make your own movies, right? But, you know, I think it is best to try to make a visually stunning movie and with a really, like, vivid story. But, you know, I think we all agree, that's not easy to do, <laughs> okay? If it was easy to do, then everybody would be doing it. Every movie would be doing that every second, right? Because it's not like Hollywood's like, let's make a movie and not make any money off of it. Like, they generally, like, well, that's, that's pretty much sometimes all they think about, right? So, I mean, with that being said, you know, like, that's why I like those fantasy... Like, when I saw that trailer, like, that was literally, like, I don't know what's happening. I don't care what's happening. Mm -hmm. I just want to just see it, in, like, big on a big screen right now. Exactly, that's how I feel. Too. You know? I remember watching Avatar, having that same feeling. I was just like, when I remember leaving Avatar, and I was looking at the ground, and I was like, the ground is like low res. <laughs> like, whoever did the texture on the in the real life... <laughs> needs to needs to get fired. <laughs> this is this is so low res. Like, what did they use? 4K maps on this? <laughs> Last gen tech, man. You know, and <laughs> that's seriously how I felt when I left that movie. I was like, real life is just low fidelity, dude. How how likely do you think it is that that studios like Blur might turn to, uh, to doing features that makes they make such awesome cinematics con consistently? 
Right? Like, that's a good example, too, right? Because those are, like, just trailers yeah. that they do, and people love them, right? They're, they're amazing. Yeah, it's just, like, it, there's there's a, an actual appeal for just, re, like, just visually stunning, very limited storytelling. But if you just put the artistry and all in, in the art, it's just like looking at a good piece of artwork, right? Yeah. And I think there's there's something there. Uh and you can have both, like something like Jurassic Park is a great example of both, right? It has like the, one of the most stunning visual effects, but it also had a very compelling story that was being told, right? Uh, that's hard to do, man. But uh, yeah, blur and stuff like that, I think that's going to happen more and more often, you know? Because technology is becoming easier and easier to use. So like, like if you've ever seen the uh, that little short film that was done as like, Attack of the Zombies and the man-eating plant thing. Uh, it's just so he, the guy was making fun of like that kind of whole genre. So that's the kind of the the point of like not being able to remember the name of it. But uh, you know, he did that all by himself. And in fact, we met him in Croatia. He's a super nice guy. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, and I was just like, "What? You're the guy that made that freaking cinematic? You're freaking awesome!" Um, and uh, he, yeah, he did it all by himself. You know, and. That's what I'm saying, like, maybe, maybe not in this year or next year, but, like, it's happening more and more that people, like, small groups of people, like, two or three people can make a pretty amazing cinematic experience. I mean, one of our uh, friends, Milan, like, made, like, his own, like, like epic splash intro for his Twitch, and it's freaking unbelievable. <laughs> and it's just, like, him and a few other people that did it, and it's, it's awesome. Favorite cinematic from a game. Favorite cinematic from a game. That's a good uh, question. That's always like there've been so many. <clears throat> I think mm. anything that Blair did usually like you know you know the game is probably gonna be bad <laughs> when Blair did the cinematic just because Blair does such good cinematics. I think trying like, to hide. This game's gonna be like low expectations, except for like Batman and stuff. But I think like any of those cinematics they did were good. Like I'm trying to think like their Halo, like their. Um, like DC one they did was pretty good. The Batman ones. Yeah, those are probably up there. Yeah. I don't know if I have a favorite. I'm just gonna see. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. All of those. I mean, all of them are so good. Um, I think it was cinematic that you watched and were just like, "What the?" <laughs> <laughs> Can't think of any action. Yeah. But I mean, most of them are pretty good. Most of them usually do their job at, at that point. <clears throat> Um, someone said Dawn of Planet of Zombies and Giant Killer Plants. Yeah, that's it. From Serious Acid. Yeah, that's exactly that's, it. That's, that's, the, that's like the actual name of Serious. Yeah. That is, that is it. It's, you should watch it. And keep in mind that that was all done by one person. Oh, really? Yeah. So, anywho. Alright, I think I'm about to close down on this. So, any other final questions or comments? Final parting questions, comments. Thanks for everyone who's been joining on all these streams. I really appreciate all of you. You guys are all awesome. Awesome people being awesome. Indeed. Okay, let's see what else we got. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's, uh, we are good. Okay, cool. Thanks again, Kalen, John, for hanging out. Yeah. Um, I, I have to probably watch the kiddos, John, so I probably won't be able to head over to the office at five if, right. like what time are you going to leave by specifically um, it's all good we could do it another day no. all right stuff, so. yeah i get it yeah i just want to play test it so yeah. like, uh, i can get more like feedback because I, I i learned from playing like just playing a few times even other games it's just like oh, dude, I, just, I need to play this as much as possible with yeah. as many people as possible um I should get high and then play because that's when all of this stuff comes, like all the problems with the game and all the, you know. <laughs> Just you, you got that documented. <laughs> it's forever documented so everyone knows how John gets his ideas. There it is. It's never that's genuine. No one's going to love you for you, John, if you're get always high. high. On life. That's what I'm talking about. I have to get high on life. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, yeah, thanks again, guys, for all for joining in. Thanks for those of you who uh, hung out for this stream. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to peace out now. Laters. 
and have a great day and I'll see you guys soon.